This segment of the news is brought to you by Smitty's Cards and Coins. Would you like to know what your collectibles are worth? Come by 2281 Postal Road, Unit 4, across from the post office. Well, it was the greatest mistake in Academy Awards history. Moonlight, a film about the young black man coming of age, won over La La Land, which held the record for the most Oscar-nominated musical film to date. But Moonlight's win was overshadowed by a massive blunder, which saw Faye Dunaway announce La La Land as the best picture winner, only for the favorite's producer, Jordan Horowitz, to interrupt acceptance speeches with the news that the wrong victor had been named. Chaos duly reigned on stage as La La Land's cast and crew grappled with the turn of fortunes. According to the accountants who are blamed with the mistake, there were two identical sets of envelopes at the Oscars. Warren Beatty was handed the spare Best Actress envelope, Emma Stone was holding the other card the whole time after she accepted her award. Here's what they say that happened. There were two sets of results, envelopes, each packed in its own briefcase, one for each of the accountants. At the event, they both were backstage to hand the envelopes to the presenters. Brian Collinan and Martha Ruiz are the Price Waterhouse Coopers partners who count the votes, memorize the winners, seal the envelopes, and give them to the awards presenters on the big night. They stand on opposite sides of the stage right off screen for the entire evening, and they each hand the respective envelope to the presenter. It doesn't sound very complicated, but you have to make sure you're giving the presenter the right envelope. The Price Waterhouse Coopers said the presenters had mistakenly been given the wrong category envelope. February's Heart Health Month. We caught up with cardiologist Dr. Tally Eric. We now know that heart health really begins in childhood. When people aged 50, 60, 70 have a heart attack due to plaque buildup, that didn't just happen overnight. We know that this process starts really in the teenage years, and we know from studies on young men in their 20s, mid-20s, late 20s, that if you look at their arteries, they've already got buildup. So this starts early. So the preventive piece obviously has to start early. Is buildup the main cause of heart attacks? By far, in a way. Almost every heart attack. Now, again, medically, when we talk heart attack, we physicians are talking about a buildup that leads to a blockage that leads to the attack, which is damage to the heart muscle. In lay terms, of course, heart attack could mean any number of things. I fainted, or gee, my blood pressure went up really high, or had a chest pain, or my heart rhythm went off. A lot of people might think, well, that's a heart attack. But when we use that word, we're talking about the number one problem, which is the artery blocking, causing the damage. That's what we call a heart attack. What causes your artery to block? Well, it's a complex process. I mean, uh, one of the things I encounter is people thinking, well, if I do X, then Y is going to happen. But it's not what I call a one-to-one -one or linear process. It's what we call in medicine polygenic or multifactorial. So as an example, I could take two people who seem identical. One of them smokes heavily eats a fatty diet and is maybe 40 pounds overweight and has diabetes. That person may have normal arteries, whereas I could have a lean person who bicycles and is normal body weight and doesn't smoke, and they may have a heart attack with clogged arteries. So that's the extreme example, but it proves the point that there are differences from one person to another. How can a person prevent a heart attack? Well, okay, so we have very good information about that. We know what a person has to do to decrease their risk. Prevent, there's nothing you can do that will guarantee or immunize you mm -hmm. from having one, but it's all about risk and how do you decrease your risk, and we know this very clearly. The intersection on Highway 372 and 160 was lined with a group of people holding signs in support of President Trump this morning. This is a national day of support for President Trump, and um, it has uh, gone on, it was a ground roots thing through the internet, and a lady called me from a Facebook group that says, can we have it? I'm active with the Republican Party, and I said, yes, we can, so we're here. Getting a lot of hunks. We are, it's so much fun, and the people are happy, we're happy, we're having a grand time. So um, this is generally the Nye County Republican Central Committee that's out here, right? Um, actually, it's been about half and half, 
about half people that are from the the uh, internet groups and and then half as the Nye County Republicans. You're going to be out here again? Saturday morning from 10 until noon and then on March 25th we've got a rally at uh, the Central off Central Committee office um, uh, on 160. 3250 South Highway 160. Yes. And, um, That'll start at, at 12.30, we're, we're having a luncheon, it's $2 for lunch, and then we're going to do the same thing and support down on the, that end of town. And then if people want to find out more about the Nye County Republican Central Committee, they can find them on Facebook, they can find them on the web, you can even give a phone call. Yes, the uh, Nye County office is open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, um, and uh, somebody returns the calls always. We'll have your business brief after the break.